Welcome to another exciting episode of the Epic Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm Brad Sugars, the Chairman and CEO of Action Coach, and today we're diving into the minds of some incredible business leaders, uncovering their real stories, strategies, and the secrets behind their victories. It's not just about success, it's about the journey, the hurdles, and turning challenges into opportunities. So let's jump right into it. Hello and welcome to the Epic Entrepreneurs Podcast. I am your host, Mauricio Pearson, practice owner here in Action Coach South Miami. Today, I am joined by Terry Harris Ellis. Terry is the director of the Adventure Service located in the United Kingdom. I'm excited to jump into a conversation about entrepreneurship with Terry. Thank you so much for joining us today and talking about this interesting subject. Would you like to start us with a brief background on who you are and what you do and what is Adventure Service? Uh, so my name's Terry. Um, so um, I suppose a brief background. I've worked with people for learning disabilities for over 20 years, 25 years, uh, but also been very keen outdoorsman. So a lot of time outdoors. Um, the Adventure Service is a service for adults with learning disabilities based around adventure. So we take people climbing, uh, caving, abseiling, canoeing, kayaking um, for, for during the day. And then we take people away for weekends as well for short breaks. It's kind of what our business is, is, around, is around. That's nice. Excellent. I love it. Like to go into a little bit more of details. Uh, can you give us a little bit about what is the structure of your company? How is your company structure? So the company, it's um, basically my wife and I set up the business. Uh, so this kind of structure has changed. I'm, I'm, my wife and I are both directors. Um, so we have a senior leadership team, a management team who run the day-to-day -day operations with um, instructors who go out and do a lot of deliver activities with our um, our service users. So that management team is uh, the one that coordinate the activities in in the in the out. Yeah, when people. Um, yeah. We have we have at the moment three different venues. What uh, we treat with a manager, and then we have a short break service with a manager that takes people away for weekends. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Let me let me ask you something. Let ask you which are the top three things you did that made you successful in the, in your business, and how other people can follow in your footstep. So I've been thinking about this, and I think one of the things kind of goes back to before the adventure service, before I set the company up. Um, I had the idea for the adventure service for quite a few years. But then in the late 2000s, 2008, 2009, when the crash happened, the um, financial crash, uh, I was working for the local authority, the kind of county council within, within the UK. Um, and they were looking for people to take voluntary redundancy. And I was called to a meeting in, in Nottingham, which is City Closeness, and uh, discussed. Um, that we were at threat of redundancy. What, what stood out for me, on the way back home, I was listening to the radio and it, there was an interview with um, business owners, people who had set up their own business. And one of the questions was, what would happen if your business failed? And the answer that was given over the radio that was that it wasn't an option. Failure wasn't an option. It was going to work and they were going to make it work. And that kind of resonated for me. And that's kind of where I decided, actually, I can make this work. And whatever happens, I will make it work. And that's kind of been a, been a like an unwritten law, a kind of mantra for myself for the last 13, 14 years while setting the adventure service up. Um, that belief that this will work. And whatever anybody else said, I will make this work. So that was one of them. Um, I suppose. Um, Another thing I did was choose the right people. Um, 
So when I was thinking about setting up a colleague, said, hey, he wants to come to work, set it up with me. Um, but he wanted to carry on working and do it part time. And that didn't feel right to me. Like I was taking all the risks and he was just going to, um, he was just going to kind of put his toe in the water. And if he wanted to back out, he could. Um, but then I think if Helen decided to join me and come on side, my uncle, my wife, we complimented each other very well. Um, she's very practical and very down to earth. Makes things happen. On a, makes things happen where I'm more of a, of, um, a visionary, more of an ideas person, not very good with the detail. Um, so that works well. I think it's choosing the right people you work with. They've got to be passionate, passionate about what you're doing as well. And I think it's, it's about following your heart, isn't it? As well, believing. Loving something, being passionate about what you're doing. If you're not passionate about it, um, I don't think there's um, any point in doing it. I think if you, because the work you have to put in, you've got to be passionate, you've got to love what you do. Um, so for me, my passion was the outdoors and working with people with learning disabilities. And so I mean, that passion is really important. I think without that, it's not going to work. So maybe my top three things, I think. Excellent, excellent. I love it. And, uh, and the important thing is that, that you were able to really find out what, I, what, what were those three, three important things, including to have the right team and doing what you really love to do. What makes you successful? Without a doubt, I think if you have the wrong people around you, it's not going to work. Back at the beginnings, uh, what made you decide to, to get into this type of business? What, and what, why this particular business? I think... Um, I think I'd always like the idea of working for myself. Um, but not, no, not kind of really knowing what to do. But then, because I, I, I work with people with learning disabilities and really enjoyed it, and my love for the outdoors, it kind of, it kind of came, came together, really. I don't think we ever started the business to make a business. I know it sounds, may sound really strange. We started the business as a, as a kind of, taking control a little bit more of our life, um, having, having an imaginary a little bit more time, which has, arri which has arrived now. We do have more time then. We're dying more control. Um, but it's always been about those working with people with learning disabilities for me, um, helping people. Our motto is to achieve potential to adventure. And that's what we do. We work with people to help them become better versions of themselves. That's both the people we work with as in our... Uh, service users, but also with the staff team. We want to help people develop and grow. And that's kind of always been a passion. Um, so it's having that interest, really, I think, in, in um, the outdoors. People will learn disabilities, but to be in control of our own destiny and our own future rather than somebody else. Being in control of what we're going to do and how we're going to live our lives. That's good, yeah. Be an adventurer and having your business has a lot of courage and a lot of uh, things that you have to put into from yourself. A lot of uh, intelligence. I think uh, I think our um, our parents. I think our parents must have thought we were we were crazy because we both got good jobs, Helen and I. But neither was good at what we done. Uh, and we had two very small children and. Um, my wife was, was breastfeeding when we took out the lease on our first building and we got a mortgage and so although it uh, it's probably felt it probably was a risk at the time it didn't feel like it, it felt exciting and we were making a you know something for the future together what was the biggest challenge and how did you overcome it in the whole process um Loads of challenges, uh, so many challenges. I think it's um, I think it's patience. I think it's probably my biggest personal challenge. I think I've had to learn over the years that um, that I have lots of ideas, 
I want to make things happen, but I want to make things happen yesterday. And I've had to learn that I need to bring people along with me. Um, so I have, I've had to learn to maybe slow the process down a little bit. So I want things to happen yesterday. So that's been one of the biggest challenges, really. Um, I suppose, I suppose for myself, I suppose business challenges for me, it's it's been also learning around finances. Um, it was only a couple of years ago that I really took an interest. My wife's always done that side of things, and my business partner. He's always been in charge of finances, but I've taken that on and I found that quite a challenge. Um, again, it's maybe not a detail per, detail oriented person. Um, I think it's something I've kind of shied away from, but over the last few years I've I've kind of um, got more involved in it um, and supported Helen with that. And it's paid benefits as well because we are starting to, you know, start to show good profits and actually looking at you know the, the business growing even more over the next few years with our plans so finance has been a big one and patience has been a big one <laughs> very very two common uh, challenges for every new business to be uh yeah. persistent yeah yeah i think as i think as being an entrepreneur yeah you you most, I would guess most entrepreneurs are quite visionary and um, come up with ideas, but sometimes, definitely myself, I needed a, I needed someone to help me in there, because I'm maybe not a detail or a person. So that's where my wife and I, my business partner, balance each other out really well. Um, I can have the big picture and then Helen can do it. <laughs> Good. And... Obviously, you, you had to grow yourself in order to be able to uh, to make this business work. So how did you personally have to grow? And what did you most have to learn to create this business or this success? What, what areas you felt that you had to grow? Oh, so many things. Um, so sales, I think, was a big thing for me. Um, I think... Um, I would never say I'm a salesperson, but I suppose everybody who's in business is a salesperson. Um, excuse me. Um, and I've had to learn to um, show off a little bit, maybe, you know, be a bit more uh, out there and um, telling people the good, good things that we do, which is not necessarily within my nature to talk about it, I think. I think it's something I've really had to learn to get used to, um, to get comfortable with. Um, just doing this out of my comfort zone. Um, so kind of putting myself more out there um, and selling the business to other people has been a, has been a, um, a big development for me. But there's been so many, especially over the last few years, there's been so many different areas I've had to develop. Finance has been a big one, understanding the fin business finance um, and understanding how it all works. And, and it is more simple, I think, than, than is, is sometimes, sometimes you're led to believe when you're setting up a business. I think it can look very daunting, but it's actually more straight. I found it more straightforward than I ever thought it would have been. But to be honest, Bruce, I could sit here for the next two days and talk about the stuff I've had to, uh, I've had to learn. Um, so I've done so much reading over the last year, two years and, and just learning and looking at every aspect of looking at growing, growing the business. Um, what type of reading uh, did you like to... What type of books do you like to read? What are your favourites? Um, I was... I think I've always been into self-development books. I've always liked um, learning about self-development and improving. Um, but over, especially since we've been with Action Coach, um, the amount of business books I've been reading has been... Um, I've become addicted, I think. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Jim Ron. I think it's fantastic stuff that Jim Rohn did. Uh, I really love. 
uh, the motivational speaker. Yeah, so many, so many good books. Uh, l l let's look at the business coaching for a minute. Anu Kana is your coach, right? Okay. Yeah, she's a she's a great coach. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, why? Why? She's fantastic. Yeah. Right. I feel very privileged to have her. Yeah. Why did you, did you get a coach, and and what did it do for you and the business? Why a coach, and what did it oh, do to wow. the business? Um, I think we were as a business. We we've been in business eleven years. We've managed eleven years without a coach somehow, um, and I think. Um, We was getting to the point where we were lost within the business. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know where we were going. We had no real direction. Um, and then Anu contacted Helen. And and I think it was just, I don't know, sometimes things happen for a reason, don't they? And Anu seemed to come along at the right time. Um, and... I think I don't. I sometimes wonder how we got to 11 years. To be honest, now, what we know now is what we knew a couple of years ago. Is is just you don't know what you don't know. I think sometimes. Um, just thinking about um, all the things that she's taken on us as on such a journey um, of development. Not only not only development through the business, but also personal growth as well, and and where we want to be in five, six, seven years time. Uh, she's she's been a critical friend. She's you know pointed us in the right direction. She's been able, been able to ask the questions that maybe we wouldn't consider asking. Um, to make sure we're, we're making the right decisions. Um, and we've introduced so many um, new systems from working with Anu and pointing us in the right direction. Um, I doubt without Anu, we would still be here because I think we would have, I would have been burnt out. That's um, good to hear. And she's not only... The two years we've been working with her, she's not only, you know... Business advisor helps you with that, like like a partner. Um, she's a critical friend, but she also become a personal friend as well. Um, I know it's fantastic, and I and I think I don't I I can't see us finishing that relationship with Anu because I think she's got so much to help us develop further until we retire, and hopefully when when Helen and I can can pull away from the business. Who we appoint to run the business will still work with Anna because I think she's got that so much to give. Um, I have had we ha when I first started, I had a, a business um, business advisor there, advised by the who were appointed by the council to help, and they told me I hadn't got a business. So 13, 14 years ago, I spoke with this person. They said they hadn't got a business. The difference with Anna is she really is in touch and knows what she's talking about, and that. The experiences, her experiences are incredible. Her knowledge is, is fantastic. Um, but then there's not only there's not only working with Anu. There's a whole um, network um, that a support network that's helped us. You know, that helped, has helped us develop personally as well um, and develop business. So I, I think I think the the whole thing with Action Coach and with Anu has been um, the best. The best money we've ever spent. Excellent. Nice to hear that. Uh, is is someone that really is from outside your business confident that will understand your situation, understand the whole process of your business, and that's something that is like having a someone in your board of directors that will help you make decisions and guide you in yes in those areas. Yeah. Yeah, without doubt, without doubt. I right? see. I mean. She's such an integral part of our business now, I couldn't imagine us working without her. Um, yeah. 
She's not just a business advisor or a business coach. She's much, much more than that. Nice to hear. Beautiful. And what type of advice, what top piece of advice you got or you will give to another entrepreneur based on your experience with your business and with your coaching? The thing is knowing what you're good at and starting to recognize what you're good at. I think I've had to be honest recently and, and accept that um, over the last 18 month, year, 18 months, that I can't do it all. Um, and it's been a big learning curve for me to kind of step back and let other people, um, and trust that other people can do what we need them to do. And who's, and who's helped me with that, I must say, and so is Helen. Um, I think again, as, 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 As a, as a business owner, you start off as a practitioner or you start off doing the, the job. Um, and I've had to move away from that. And as the business has grown, um, oh, I, I'm not sure you still there. As the business has grown, um, my role within the business has changed from an instructor through to manager through to um, director who actually does very little day to day operations anymore. Or, no direct no and it's, it's been a big thing for me to learn that and to, so what I would s s advise and stuff I take it from would be trust to the people that you can that they can do that and let them get on with doing their job okay well that's true that's true well that's a very interesting area you're talking about well those this thank you very much Uh, for the time today, Terry. It was very I'm great meeting you. Very hard to step back. Yeah. I'm getting there. I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was very nice uh, having this conversation. It was very nice learning about your business. You're a very interesting business and a very nice story Thank about you. the whole process of how you came up with uh, having it and how you have to sustain it because uh, they have a lot of fun. The, the, the thing is about the adventure service. And um, the main thing is we have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like we love it. Excellent. Well, thank you for uh, sharing again your entrepreneurial journey. And to everyone watching, I look forward to seeing you, you and thank our you. next episode. Thank you. Have everyone a nice day. And that's a wrap for today's epic conversation here on Epic Entrepreneurs. Huge thanks to our amazing guest for their pouring their heart into sharing their journey. If you enjoyed this episode, hit that subscribe button, leave a review, share it or hit that bell. But until next time, let's make sure you keep dreaming, take massive action and stay epic.